Hi everyone, a blessed day to all of you. Praying that all of you are safe and doing well together with your families and loved ones. I'm also hoping that you were able to cope with our online learning. So this week, we have two topics to be discussed. The first one is the content of this video. Um, we will talk about getting started with physical examination. And on the other video, it's about physical examination, wherein we will start with general survey, um, vital signs taking, and pain. So, do not forget to remember what you have learned in our previous discussion. Apply the communication techniques or the therapeutic communication techniques in your nurse-patient interaction. Basically, those are essential, especially uh, when you are doing the physical examination. Okay. So, before we will proceed to our um, topics, let me present this slide first. Okay. So, to start with your physical examination, as a student, you should understand that before starting physical examination, you already understand the concerns of your patient. You already have the health history of your client. You may feel excited to perform the physical examination, di bang saya nun? Okay, but then you have to remember that collection of subjective data is vital or it is very important because it will help you, it will guide you, or it will assist you to have a focused physical examination accordingly. Okay, so wag masyadang excited. Okay, once you know the concerns of your patient plus you have the subjective data which was collected during your health history, um, now is the time for you to proceed to your physical examination. Okay, remember that all data that you got from your health history are subjective while your physical examination data are usually objective data. So your physical exam is a process to collect objective data from the patient. Okay, when we say objective data, these are data that are observable, okay, using your five senses and measurable data. These are the signs, okay? Pag sinabi natin objective data are the signs, okay? Pag sinabi natin subjective data are the symptoms, okay? So, when we say observable, it can be observed using your five senses, okay? Your sense of sight, wherein you're going to observe the appearance of your patient, the uh, movement of your client, and etc. Next, your sense of touch, okay? You will do the palpation, which is one of your um, techniques in doing the, the physical exam. You will use your sense of touch when you will touch your client for the temperature of the client. Is it warm? Or if there is presence of mass or nodules? Yeah, example, yeah. Okay, the sense of smell, okay? Um... May acetone odor ba or any foul smelling to your client that might be a sign of problem. Um, what else? You will use your sense of hearing where, wherein you will uh, listen to the client. You will use your stethoscope to listen the heart rate of your client, to listen the lung sounds, to listen the abdominal or the heart sounds. Okay? So, the sense of taste. Are you going to taste your client? Naku, wag mong tikman yung pasyente mo. Ibang usapan yun. Okay? Yung sense of taste, gagamitin yun 
uh, to check your client, siya yung magti-taste. Pwede mong patikimin siya ng coffee, patikimin ng salt, ng sugar, because you will check the the cranial nerve number 9 or the glossopharyngeal cranial nerve of your client if okay ito, kung walang problem ang kanyang taste buds especially during this time no, when you're assessing diba, yung sa COVID, merong yung unang-unang COVID dati diba, merong loss of taste yung inyong pasyente, baka wala na siyang panlasa sa sweet Yan. So, the purpose of your physical examination is to determine changes in the health status or the patient health status. Okay, you have, diba, for example lang, yung i-weight natin yung client, i-weight natin yung client. You have to check if yung weight ba, weight ba ng client mo may changes, may improvement. Okay, so that is an example. Okay, um, for you to know kung may problem pa ba talaga si patient, nag-improve ba ang iyong patient care or not. Okay, to determine how to respond to a problem. So, your, your assessment data, this will serve as your baseline data for you to identify your nursing diagnosis, of course, for your nursing care plan, and then you do your plan, and then what are the interventions, okay, to help your client, and then uh, later on, you have to evaluate it. If your uh, 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 care or patient care was effective or not, okay? And then, to promote healthy lifestyle and well-being. Of course, again, the data that you obtain during your health history taking and physical examination will serve as your baseline data uh, para malaman mo yung health status of the client. Ano ba yung pwede mong suggest or health teaching to promote a healthy lifestyle? For example, nakita mo diabetic client. Okay, so ano ba yung healthy lifestyle? Okay, you might want to uh, to to give healthy teaching on how to uh, to eat nutritious food. Okay, what else? Um, to do exercise. Yeah, those are examples. Okay, by the way, for an accurate uh, example of your objective data. Another example of this are the vital signs. For example, yung blood pressure, di ba? Measurable yun. For example, you will say 180 over uh, 100 millimeter per mercury. The temperature, meron ding figure yun, 38.9. So, those are examples, no? From your vital signs, those are objectives. It is measurable. The weight of your client, the height of your client. What else? The laboratory findings, okay? Those are objective data. Okay, so... Uh, so, to begin with your comprehensive adult physical examination, it is very important to set the stage first by reflecting on your own approach to the patient. You can also recall or remember what you have learned in our previous discussion about therapeutic techniques or therapeutic communication techniques. Okay, you have to be straightforward, meaning you have to be direct to the point. So, wala nang maraming paligoy-ligoy pa. Okay, have a professional demeanor, be, uh, meaning you have to be sensitive to the feelings of your patient, to the family members and relatives. You have to show respect, show compassion, and you have to listen to your patient. Okay? So, make your patient feel comfortable again by um, actively listening to the story of your client. Okay? Uh, by providing a comfortable environment. Of course, not too hot, not too cold, not noisy. Yeah. And then the distance between you and the patient. Okay, especially during this pandemic, you have to practice at least one meter distance. Okay, uh, you have to spend extra time as needed. Do not show the patient that you are in a hurry, especially if the patient are telling you uh, stories that are not relevant to the topic. So maybe you can uh, uh, find ways para maibalik mo yung 
uh, topics. Okay, but do not stop the patient or do not show that you are not interested anymore. Okay, explain to the patient what is happening or what you are doing. Okay, if you are uh, checking, if you are touching the client, if you are doing a assessment, for example, in the breast. Okay, so you can tell the patient, okay, mom, I'm going to touch your breast. Okay, that is to feel if there is any lumps or mass. Okay. And then avoid interpreting your findings just in case, for example, meron kang nakitang uh, or nakapang bukol sa breast of the client. Tapos sasabihin ni client, may nakakapa ka ba? Um, of course, do not lie to the client. Pag meron, yes po, meron. But do not give interpretation. You can tell your client that I will refer this to your physician. Okay, because the doctor... Uh, might orders lab or might order laboratories okay so um, so part of setting the stage in doing the physical examination is to adjust the lighting and the environment so first to adjust the environment you may uh, first close the door or if you are in the ward you may close the curtain that is for privacy and you can adjust the temperature of the room okay you may turn on the electric fan or the air con uh, make sure it is not too cold or too hot okay so if you are doing the physical examination in uh, in a place where in there are a lot of people make sure to find a corner okay that is convenient for you and the patient and you can hear each other okay so part of it is to adjust the bed to convenient height or to comfortable working height okay if you are performing if you are uh, assessing for example the breast of the client okay you adjust the height of the bed uh, that is comfortable for you so that you as a you as an examiner uh, you will not strain your back okay that is for good body mechanics okay uh, good lighting so there are two types of lighting the tangential lighting okay the tangential lighting and the perpendicular lighting so for the medical practitioner they recommend the use for tangential light because it casts light across the body surface okay especially if you are inspecting for the jugular um, veins or venous pulse or if you are checking the thyroid gland and the apical pulse of the heart okay so tangential light again it casts light across the body um, that shows contours elevations and depressions okay whether um, the person is moving or on a stationary so kitang kita natin yung yung shape okay but when the light is perpendicular uh, shadows are reduced and subtle undulations across the surface of the of the particular part is also lost so hindi masyadong clear so we have an example of tangential light no or an experiment no a dance uh, later in the next slides okay um so once you've done setting the stage make sure also to go check your equipment okay do not start with your physical examination kapag hindi pa complete ang inyong equipment okay um, make sure that before going to the client you all have the equipments that are necessary in doing the physical examination okay of course in doing the procedure in or in doing the physical examination you have to make sure that you have a room to perform physical examination just in case you are in the ward again you have to uh, close the curtain to provide privacy to your client and of course inside the room you have the, the chair okay or the bed or stretcher if you need to put your patient on uh, supine or 
if you want to change the position of your client. Of course, this one is a Mayo table no, to place. Uh, this is for your materials and supplies. And of course, you should have your sink and your um, a faucet for hand washing. You have to remember the five moments of hand washing. No, you have to do hand washing before touching your client, before a procedure, after touching a client, after touching a patient in the patient's environment, and after doing the procedure or after touching the body fluids that are uh, usually exposure weeks. Those are the five moments of hand hygiene. Okay, before um, uh, you have to remember that in doing the physical examination. All right, so as I mentioned in the previous slides, this is the uh, an example, no, kung paano, kung ano itsura, using the tangential light and using the perpendicular lights, wherein you can you can observe the veins, the, the shadow of the veins you, using the tangential light. This was actually an experiment that according to the book of Bates, using the tangential light, the, the pulse no, in the wrist is actually visible okay, using the tangential light compared to uh, the perpendicular light. Because again, using tangential light, um, you, can show, uh, you can see the, the elevations, the angulations, nodulations, and etc. Okay? So, apart from doing the self-reflection, manipulating the client's environment, and reviewing the chart of your client, make sure to check also the following materials, supplies, and equipment. Okay, make sure to check your toggle box for hand sanitizer, examination gloves, this could be your clean gloves, or your sterile gloves. So it depends to the type of procedure that you will perform, whether it requires a, a sterile gloves or just a clean gloves. But make sure to place your clean gloves on a plastic container or plastic wrapper, okay? Um, prepare also your alcohol wipes. If you don't have, you can have your um, cotton balls with alcohol and place it in a container and another container for a dry cotton balls. Prepare a paper and pen or computer or in our case, uh, notebooks or tickler will do. That is for writing down the information or the, the information you had collected during your interview. Draw sheet or drapes. Okay, the draw sheet is used for you to position your client and drapes is of course to to, uh, to cover your client because in doing the physical examination, make sure to show only the, the part that you are assessing. For example, you're assessing only the right breast, make sure to cover the left breast, okay? So that's the purpose of your drapes or your, and your draw sheet is to, to position your client, to turn your client from side to side, that will help you. Stageometer, and it should be uh, a, a place, no? properly install in the in the wall of the clinic uh, this is to measure the height of the client and the scale or the weighing scale to uh, measure the weight of your client examination light okay you can also have your pen light and that is when you are examining for especially for the pupil uh, for the ears the inner structure of the ears and etc you should have the thermometer to, men, uh, to check the temperature of your client. Watch with second hand. This will be used when you are counting for the heart rate, pulse rate, or the respiratory rate of your client. The manometer and the stethoscope. Okay, of course, this will be used to check the, uh, the blood pressure of your client. The stethoscope will be used to hear the sound of the heart, the lungs, and etc. Okay, Doppler. Okay, usually uh, used to uh, uh, to check the there are different kinds of Doppler. For example, no, the Doppler for the pregnant woman is to count to hear the 
the heart rate or the heart tone of the baby. Ophthalmoscope that is to uh, that is used to view the inner structure of the eyes, particularly the retina. And the nasal speculum, of course, that is to view the inner structure of the nose, the otoscope or speculums to view again. The, this is used to view the inner structure of the ears. Of course, the sense that is to check or used to, to check the sense of smell. The Snellen chart, this is used to check the, uh, the vision of your client. Uh, particularly the far vision. Opaque card that is used to cover if you are inspecting one eye at a time. For example, you are, you, are, you are inspecting for the left eye. The opaque card is used to cover the right eye and vice versa. Okay, the pen light. Uh, the tongue depressors, of course, that is for you to push down the tongue if you are viewing the tonsils, the uvula. Yeah. 2x2 two two gauze pads, okay, just in case na meron kang pagagamitan ng iyong gauze pads to cover if there is wounds or, or etc. A cup of water, okay, if you are checking for the trachea or the thyroid gland, you may ask the client to swallow or to sip a cup of water. Okay, tape measure, so maraming gamit din yung tape measure, okay, to to of course to measure to measure a specific size di ba kung meron tayong tinitingnan for example doon sa ating um expecting of the thorax lalo na yung sa back okay later meron kayong matutunan diyan and when you uh, assess the size then no kung ano yung saan may uh, may changes ng sound for example sa liver okay ilan ang distance yun you will be using the tape measure and of course, for the baby, no, kapag minimeasure natin yung head circumference, yan. So, chest circumference, and etc. Okay? Alright, so this is the light, no, the lighting that uh, you will be using for tangential light but if you're uh, inspecting a particular structure, okay, or body parts okay and this is an example of your pen light you can choose your favorite color so ideally mas maganda if you have the size of the pupil so when you are doing the physical examination especially in the pupil you can say uh, ano ba yung size the normal size of the pupil okay is the size of your client's pupil is within normal or not okay so at least you have this um it's it is calibrated Okay, so the stadiometer and the scale, the weighing scale, of course, the stadiometer that is used to uh, measure the height of your client and most of the stadiometer is, should be um, properly installed on, in the wall of the clinic or in a particular department where you're doing the physical exam okay and this is an example of your weighing scale that is to check the weight of your client okay in do by the way in doing the in checking the height of your client now although we will be discussing this one uh, in more detail uh, in the next chapter okay but make sure okay to remember that when you are assessing the height of the client you ask the client to remove the shoes okay when you are assessing the weight of the client of course dapat yung light clothing lang ang suot ni client and it should uh, you should weigh your client same time no alimbawa in the morning mo siya wini weigh to to check if there is changes every morning before breakfast mo kinukuha yung kanyang weight so dapat same time para alam mo if there is changes same weight of clothing and of course remove then ng shoes yeah. so another important equipment in doing the physical examination is of course your bp apparatus or blood pressure apparatus this includes your um speed manometer and your stethoscope of course uh, we will be using the manual BP apparatus, not the digital apparatus, okay? So, that is to uh, get the accurate blood pressure of the client, of the patient, okay? So, the parts of the of your BP apparatus will be discussed 
uh, in your vital signs taking, particularly in blood pressure taking. Okay, so just make sure your stethoscope has a diaphragm and a bell. Okay, so what is the difference between diaphragm? So this is the the diaphragm, no, the bigger, okay, or the wider, and the narrower is the the bell. Okay, so the diaphragm is used for higher pitch sounds when you are checking for the breath sounds and the normal heart sounds while the be while the bell is best for uh, detecting lower pitch sounds um, particularly for adventitious sounds like heart murmurs and some uh, bowel sounds so you will be using the bell for that so that's why we require you to have a, a stethoscope that has bell and um, diaphragm okay so you should have your uh, thermometer digital thermometer so we don't recommend using a uh, mercurial thermometer okay so um, there are different types of thermometer. There is anal thermometer, rectal thermometer, and axilla. So, if you have the budget, you can have the three types of thermometer. And this picture is the pulse oximeter. This is used to, uh, to uh, monitor the oxygen saturation of the body. Okay, so in this case, this is the SpO2 or the oxygen saturation, 98%. So, that's below norm. Uh, at least... Malapit pa rin siya sa normal, although 100% is the appropriate or normal SpO2. And this is the pulse rate, okay, 87. So, your pulse oximeter can be used in monitoring for, again, oxygen saturation and pulse rate. Okay, especially for the patient who has lung problem. At, and this is very important during this period, no, na uso yung a COVID, no? Uh, for you to know if you really have the difficulty of breathing, if you have a good saturation or oxygen saturation in your body, you can monitor it using this um, equipment. And of course, you should have your um, wristwatch with second hand, of course. Dapat may second hand. And again, because you will be counting the heart rate, the pulse rate, and the respiratory rate of your client in one full minute. Okay. So, dapat nabibilang or natitingnan mo talaga yan dito sa iyong wristwatch. Okay. This is an example of Doppler. Okay. So, that is to check the the heart tone, the fetal heart tone or the FHT. Actually, uh, during this semester, uh, we, we don't uh, require you to have this one naman because you will have you will be needing this one in the next semester but actually uh, pinapakita lang namin yan uh, this is not part of your tackle box okay? so this is the example of your ophthalmoscope again that this is to view the blood vessels or the internal structure of your eyes, especially the retina, if there is bleeding or there is problem. Okay, so merong patient side, it has two sides. No, kapag view mo like in the picture, yung distance mo between the patient, but this time, of course, during the pandemic, this is not applicable na. No, meron ng mga high-tech na ophthalmoscope na ginagamit, especially our ophthalmologists. Okay, kasi this one, no, kita mo the distance is very uh, few inches lang uh, away from your client's eye. So, it has two sides. Okay? Side A and side B. Of course, the side A, ito yung the patient's side. No? Meron siyang viewing window. There are parts. Meron siyang filter switch wherein you can adjust. No? Wherein the practitioner can adjust. You can zoom in, zoom out. Yan. Diopter dial. Yan. Rheostat, etc. So, this is the practitioner side, yung hahawakan mo nandito sa eyes mo. Okay, meron din siyang on and off switch. Again, um, we don't recommend you naman to have this one. So, this is just uh, for you to know how ophthalmoscope looks like. 
Okay, this is the nasal speculum. Okay, yan. So, nasal speculum, again, that is to open the, the nasal passages for you to view. Okay, you can use pen light to view the inner structure of the nose to check the discharge, the color of the discharge, or if there is presence of mass inside, or if there is deformity of the cartilage, and etc. Okay, the otoscope, again, this is to view the, the inner, the middle, okay, structure, okay, to your outer, middle, and inner structure of the, the ears, okay, okay. Jan sa ear canal. Jan mo ilalagay yan for, for the examiner to have a field view of the eardrum. Okay, or the inner structure. Okay. So, this is the Snellen chart wherein you have to place it at least 20 feet away from the patient. And then, this is the opaque card. Okay, wherein you have to cover the eye of the client if you're examining one eye at a time. Okay? So, ito yung ipi-place mo. So, this is opaque card. Okay, so moving forward to other uh, materials or equipment that you will need in doing the physical examination, particularly for the musculoskeletal system, you will need the goniometer. This is actually a device used to measure a joint's range of motion. And another one is the scoliometer. This is used to um, measure the spine of your client. If there is a presence of humps, ayan, you may measure using the scoliometer. It looks like a protector. And a reflex hammer, of course, to check the reflexes of your client. For example, the biceps, triceps, yeah, yung reflexes doon, and etc. The tuning fork could be 120 and 512 hertz. Okay, this will be used to check the hearing of your client. If there is a problem with the air conduction or with the bone conduction. Yeah, Q-tips, paper clips or other disposable objects will be used for testing the sense of touch. And cotton, this will be used, okay, for the sense of touch as well, okay, if the patient can feel a sense of light touch. Mini mental status examination tool, from the word examination tool, this is actually in a form of questionnaire. So, there is there are a series of questions that you will ask the client for you to determine the mental status of your client. Okay? Uh, if your client is oriented to the time, place, person, and etc. And near vision card for the eyes, of course, for the near vision. Okay? It looks like your Snell and chart, but it's, it is a smaller version and the patient can hold it at least 14 inches away. Okay? So, this is an example of your goniometer. Okay. Ayan. So, ganyan ang itsura niya to measure the joint range of motion. And this is the scoliometer. Okay. But yes, scoliometer. Again, to, this is to measure if there is um, the deviation of the client's spine. No? If there is presence of hump or to determine the problem of uh, scoliosis. So, this is an example of your tuning fork. I'm sure, I believe, you already have this in your tackle box. And this is the, um, yung sinasabi natin for the near vision na gagamitin natin. Moving on to our physical examination. Okay, please don't forget. Okay, while you are doing the physical exam, to apply standard and MRSA precautions or your methicillin resistant is the Philococcus aureus. Why? Because um, we expect that all blood, body fluids, secretions, excretions, non-intact skins like the presence of ulcers, open wound, etc., mucous membranes may contain 
transmissible infectious agents. Therefore, it should be applied to all patients that when you perform a physical examination, you should practice the following. Hand hygiene. You have to practice the five moments of doing the hand hygiene and use of your personal protective equipment. Ano ba ang mga to? Uh, if you need to use your, um, of course, you need to use your mask. Okay. Your eye, face shield or your eyewear and then your cup. You can use your gown, your gloves. Okay. And those are your PPE. Safe injection practices, of course. Do not recap. If you're injecting, never recap. Okay, you have to dispose the sharps in a sharp container. Okay, safe handling of contaminated equipment or surfaces. Respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette. So, dapat, what is the proper way of coughing? You have to cover your, or even you, you inform your cl client to cover the mouth when coughing. Okay, or if you're, of you, or if you are doing the physical exam, of course, you have to wear your mask, diba? You can also instruct your patient to wear mask at the same time. Okay, patient isolation. Okay, alam nyo na yan. Uh, common yan ngayon, tulad na meron tayong COVID-19. Sa kapag may signs and symptoms, we isolate. No, kapag meron siyang cough, fever, cold, so we have to isolate the patient. No, ibig sabihin, away from us para hindi mag-spread yung uh, viruses okay and precautions related to various objects okay you have to wash the equipments before and after use etc okay so now you know the standard precautions okay or the mrsa uh, precautions you have to practice as well the universal precautions ano ba yung mga yon uh, decide to prevent parenteral Okay, mucous membrane and non-contact exposure to healthcare workers to blood-borne pathogens like your HIV or human immunodeficiency virus or the HBV or the hepatitis B virus. Ano po ba ibig sabihin ng parenteral? Okay, this can be transmitted via um, blood okay, or contact, blood contact. Paano ba yun? So, maybe through needle prick or um, nasugatan ka using the scalpel na ginamit sa client. Okay? Mucous membrane. Merong tumalsik sa eyes mo. That's why you have to use your face shield or your eye shield. Okay? Kasi may mucous membrane ka dyan. So, may body fluids or bloods from the patient na tumalsik sa eyes mo. May mucous membrane dyan. Okay? Okay? It includes all body fluids, blood that contain the visible blood, semen, vaginal secretions, okay, and cerebrospinal, synovial, pleural, peritoneal, pericardial, and amniotic fluid. Okay, so to prevent this one, uh, the examiner must wear PPE, your personal protective equipment. Again, this includes your mask, your eyewear, your uh, cup, face shield, your gown, your gloves. Okay. Report any injuries related to sharps. Okay. Pagka nagkaroon ng case ng needle prick. Okay. Lalo na sa inyong mga students. Pag needle prick, do not be afraid to report it to your clinical instructor para ma-check natin or makapagbigay tayo ng um, prevention. Okay? Okay, so do not forget to perform the hand washing technique with soap and water. So, you know how to do it already because you're done with your uh, skill number one in your uh, FNP. Okay? So, the Centers for Disease Control recommended the following situations where the hand hygiene must be performed. Again, that is before touching a patient, even if you are wearing a gloves. Okay, that is not an excuse. Kahit na magsusuot ka ng gloves, you should still perform hand hygiene. Before exiting a patient's care, after uh, touching the patient's or the patient's immediate environment. So, after contact with blood, 
body fluids or excretions or wound dressing. You have to do hand washing also uh, prior to performing an aseptic task. Okay. Uh, if hands will be moving from contaminated body site to a clean body site during your uh, patient care or during your physical examination, okay, nag-touch ka ng dirty and or contaminated, okay, for example, wound, and then you will be moving to other sites, you have to do hand washing again. And then do hand washing after removal of the glove, okay. So, this, act, this is actually uh, included in your five moments of hand hygiene. So, na-elaborate lang siya. Okay? Use soap and water when hands are visibly soiled. Okay? Or after caring for patients with known or suspected infectious diarrhea. So, make sure to use soap and water. Hindi po enough na mag-hand sanitizer lang kayo. The preferred method of hand decontamination is with an alcohol-based hand drug or, and, or otherwise. Okay. So, make sure that during your physical examination, you have to make your patient comfortable. And again, this is by showing concern for the privacy and modesty of the client. You have to be sensitive. You have to be sensitive, especially if you are um, checking the sensitive areas of the client. For example, the breast, the genital areas. Of course, you have to cover it or you have to acknowledge the patient or you have to talk to the clients. So are you comfortable if I'm going to check this part? Okay. Provide proper draping. Okay. Again, um, you have to visualize one area of the body at time like for example kanina if you're checking the breast of your client if you're checking the right side of the breast you have to make sure that you cover the other parts or the left breast of the client you have to expose the part that you are checking only that part you have to tell the patient what you will be doing okay mom i'm going to touch your breast or mom i'm going to move you to a left to, to your left side or mom I'm going you need to remove your underwear because I'm going to check your uh, genitalia okay you have to um, inform the client okay be sensitive to patients non-verbal cues baka naman oh, nasa expression niya na na medyo uncomfortable or nasasaktan siya okay you can ask the client is this painful okay para malaman mo if Okay lang ba si client or not? Give courteous and clear instructions. For example, uh, ma'am, um, you can now uh, sit down. Okay, Sit down. Okay, You have to be clear of your instruction. Keeping the patient informed, okay, um, you have to inform your client no, that ano ba yung nakita mo on that area. Pero again, do not interpret your findings. Okay? For example, ay ma, meron po pala kayong uh, nunal in this area. Okay? Or meron po akong nakitang bukol on this area. Okay? Nararamdaman niyo po ba? Okay. Tell the patient your general impression. Okay? Ano ba yung general na nakita mo? Like for example nga, meron po akong nakapang bukol sa inyong left breast. So that's the general impression. And again, do not uh, um, interpret the findings. Baka sabihin mo, this is blah blah blah. Okay. So now that you know the history of your patient, you memorize the therapeutic communication techniques, plus you all have the equipments, the supplies, and the materials needed for your physical examination. Are you that excited? Okay, so kung excited ka na, before you begin with your examination, uh, make sure to study the four cardinal techniques of physical examination. You have to plan your sequence, the scope of your examination, and how you will position your client. Whether you will need to put your client or place your client on supine, semi-fowlers, high-fowlers, etc. Okay? Um, remember that the physical examination relies on the four classic techniques such as your inspection, uh, palpation, percussion, and finally your auscultation. This will 
uh, always be used in this order or we call it the IPPA. Okay? Itong sequence na to will be used in all systems. Okay? When you're checking the systems of the human body except for the abdomen. Okay? For the abdominal uh, examination kasi um, iba yung sequence. You have to do the inspection first and then you do the auscultation percussion and lastly the palpation. Doon lang po mag-iiba for the abdominal examination. Why? Because um, if you perform palpation before auscultation, this might uh, increase the bowel motility. Okay? Or your findings will be altered. Okay? Alright, so moving on to the first uh, classic technique of doing the physical examination, your inspection. So in doing the inspection as an examiner, you have to use your sense of sight. Okay, not only the sense of sight, you can also use your sense of smell. Okay, because you will be closely observing your patient's appearance, okay, the appearance that includes the, the hygiene of your client, the clothing of your client, okay, the behavior of your client, the movement of your client, including the, phys the facial expressions, yan, okay, yung body building, yung client, yung height, yan, that's part of the inspection. The skin conditions, okay, if there is... Um, presence of lesions, uh, scars, etc. Okay? The eye movement. Okay. For example, you're also checking the, the tongue of, the, of your client, the movement of the uvula, or the teeth of your client. So, you will be using an uh, inspection technique. Okay? So, the second uh, classic technique of doing the physical examination is what we call your palpation. So, in this technique, you will be using your sense of touch. Okay, your sense of touch. That is, uh, you will be uh, using a tactile pressure uh, from the palmar of your fingers or your or the pads of your fingers. Okay, that is to assess if there is areas of um elevations for example meron bang buccal or may mass or is there a depression particularly in the intercostal spaces of the ribs okay kung may lung problem so makikita mo kung may depressions or may a uh, fracture ang ribs okay that is also to uh, to to feel if the patient is warm or cold okay you will be using your palpation Okay, ano pa? If there is presence of tenderness, so ipipress mo, sasabihin mo kay patient, is this painful? Masakit po ba sa area na to? Okay. Um, also to check for lymph nodes, mass, okay, for pulse, di ba? When you're counting for pulse rate, okay, you will be using your pa uh, palpation. Also to check for the crepitus or the sounds, okay? yung sounds ng inyong mga between the muscles or the crepitus of between the joints okay you can you can use your a uh, palpation technique okay all right so another technique okay of your physical exam is the percussion okay percussion uh, you will use your flexor finger, okay, usually the middle finger or the third finger, so to deliver or to strap, no? For example, igaganyan mo yan, ididikit mo dun sa area, tapos yung isa, okay, in middle then, katulad ng nasa picture, and then you tap, okay, you have to percuss, because you are listening for the, ano, for the tone, okay, for the tone, particularly if you're checking, the chest of the client or the sound wave of the abdominal region. Okay. 
Or for the abdominal, you're checking if there is dullness, okay, for the liver portion. Okay, okay so the last a classic technique of your physical examination, which is your auscultation. So, in doing this technique, you will need your stethoscope, okay? Um, your stethoscope, again, should have the diaphragm and the bell. So, auscultation is used to, uh, to, to listen to the heart sounds, to the lung sounds, to the abdominal sounds, okay, and etc. And remember that the bell of your stethoscope is used to listen a lower pitch sounds, especially for the uh, adventitious or abnormal sounds of the heart and the abdomen. But if you are listening for the breath sounds and the heart sounds or a normal heart sounds, you will use the, the diaphragm of the stethoscope. So you can also use auscultation in detecting bruits of or turbulence over the arterial vessels. For example, in your jugular vein. Yeah. So, pwede ka rin gumamit ng bell of your stethoscope or using the auscultation techniques. So, again, so uh, you have to uh, use the sequence of examination. As I mentioned in the previous slides, the IPPA for all the system of the human body except for the abdomen wherein you have to do uh, the inspection and it will be followed by auscultation. Okay, last is then percussion and then lastly the palpation. Okay, uh, maximize the patient's comfort. Of course, how will you do this? Um, you have to inspect. Kaya nag PPA tayo, no? You have to do the inspection. Meron tayong ginamit na sequence para yung comfort of the client. And of course, may iwasan natin yung um, changing, uh, frequent changing of the position of the client. So you have to do, aside from IPPA, you have to inspect or you have to do the physical examination head to toe. Ibig sabihin, you have to start from the head, all the structures of the head part, then down, going down bago ka pumunta doon sa toes or the foot. Okay, tapusin mo muna lahat from head to toe. Or if you are doing the anterior portion, tapusin mo muna yung anterior bago yung posterior para hindi iwasan mo yung uh, frequent change of position of the client that might lead to uh, uncomfortable na yung, yung patient. So, maintain patient safety. Make sure that uh, you, if you need to raise the side rails, okay, you assist your client to prevent, uh, example, falls or other injuries. So avoid unnecessary changes in position. That's why I told you that if you are going to assess the anterior part or if you're going to assess the head part, head part mo na lahat or anterior or harap, harap mo na lahat before you move to the posterior part para hindi maging... Uh, Walang discomfort to the patient. Enhance clinical accuracy and efficiency. And in general, move from head to toe. So, another techniques of examination that will help you, you know, this are coming from uh, healthcare providers. You know, they recommend uh, examining the patient from patient's right side. Moving to opposite side or foot only as necessary. So, included dito, even if you are a left-handed individual, still, must better now that you have to start from the right side of the client. Okay, so this is the standard position for examination. Why? It offers several advantages. So, the estimates of the jugular venous pressure is more reliable when you start. Now, mas malakas daw siya sa right side. And in doing uh, palpation on the apical pulse, of course, sa right side then, no? Tables position to accommodate right-sided right -sided approach. Usually, doon nakaposition ang ating mga table in the hospitals, okay, or clinics. So, these are the references of my presentation. Thank you everyone for your time. So this is the end of my first presentation for this week. 
So, you can have your break for now. And then, later, you can proceed to our next video for the physical examination on general survey, a vital signs checking, and pain. Okay? So, thank you again, everyone. Bye-bye! God bless you all.